Aloha. Welcome to Condo Insider of Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Attorney Nalan. Today, uh, we're very pleased to have our guest, Nicholas Severson, uh, attorney, managing attorney of the Housing and Consumer Unit at the Legal Aid Society of Hawaii. And he's also currently serving as the interim managing attorney for Legal Aid's Maui office. His practice primarily includes housing discrimination cases and general landlord-tenant disputes. He previously served as a staff attorney in Legal Aid's Maui office. Prior to graduating from Villanova University's law school and embarking on a legal career in 2019, he worked in higher education administration at the Drexel University and the University of Wyoming. Welcome, Nick. So today's session is called the Info Session with Legal Aid Maui Office. As we all know, after the Maui fire, uh, your office must be super busy with a lot of you know, questions through hotlines and programs. So uh, this would be a great opportunity for us to learn, to learn about all the efforts and the great programs, resources, uh, currently available for Lahaina residents. So pretty much, I think I will, you know, give you the time and you can run the show today. Thank you so much. Great. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, thanks for inviting us to be a part of this conversation, um, you know, during this critical time in our community. So uh, I guess I'll just start a little bit by talking about, um, I guess, legal aid's presence um, currently um, on Maui and kind of our role in um, sort of the legal landscape um, post-disaster. So um, just kind of broadly, the Legal Aid Society of Hawaii has offices on um, each of the major islands, um, including Maui. Um, the Maui office, um, when fully staffed, is three attorneys and four paralegals that handle a variety of legal issues, right? So everything from housing to, um, you know, vital documents to um, family law, um, consumer issues, a whole host of things. Uh, but certainly that um, is being reshaped uh, post, post fire, post disaster, right? So we're trying to figure out how we can adapt and how we can be there uh, to meet the needs of the community in this difficult time. So in the last few months, that's taken on a variety of, of forms and functions, right? Um, first and foremost, being present in the community and making sure that we have staff available to you know, meet with folks, um, complete intakes for folks that were able to assist, um, and, and just talk through the the range of legal issues that folks might be experiencing so we can provide some legal information just to point folks in, in the right direction, right? I think so much of what we're seeing on the ground is that people have so many different issues that um, that they're dealing with, right? Um, and, and many issues that they might not even anticipate yet just because they're dealing with so many of the um, you know, very extreme, very dire kind of day-to-day -day, uh, repercussions from the disaster. So uh, we, we have staff that's um, available on a weekly basis at the um, Disaster Recovery Center out in Lahaina. Uh, we've had staff available at the Kahului location and Pukalani location as well previously. Uh, we also have staff um, on a weekly basis at um, CNHA's um, hub in Kahului as well. And, and that's really meant to be an informal way to engage with folks, right? So again, sitting at tables, talking story with folks as they come up to, to talk about what they're experiencing, right? And, and try to answer questions and point them in the right direction. And then obviously we're, we're getting out in the community, we're doing specific outreach um, and education. So targeted events last week, we were at a, a mortgage event that was held at the Hyatt um, in Ka'anapali. Uh, we've had staff at uh, a keiki fair recently. Uh, we did a joint intake event with Volunteer Legal Services Hawaii. Uh, so kind of a whole host of things, right, to get out into the community, um, immigration clinics, really just trying to meet folks where they're at and, and help them, you know, whatever way we can, in addition to providing sort of the regular level of services that we do um, generally in our Maui office. So there must be a lot of, I guess, frequently asked questions. And then, you know, if you have a list of those questions, you know, tied to our audience, uh, maybe, you know, for owners or residents living in condo buildings uh, in connection with that, in, with a disaster, uh, are you willing to share with us that, you know, answers to that frequently asked question list you have? Yeah, I'm happy to talk through a few of the things that see that we see with, you know, regular frequency, right? So um, I think you know, maybe the first and, and biggest thing to talk about, and this is relatively um, recent news, I guess, as of today, um, the foreclosure moratorium for federally backed mortgages 
um, has been extended. So previously, um, that was in place through November 6th. Obviously, we're rapidly approaching that date. Mm -hmm. It's since been extended into March, I believe March 6th. So for folks with federally backed mortgages that are dealing with all of the you know terrible ramifications of the fire, it, it, hopefully it provides a little bit of, of comfort and peace of mind to know that there's going to be um, you know, a longer runway for them to try to uh, address issues related to that. Uh, for folks that have um, regular, uh, you know, non non federally backed mortgages, I guess uh, many of the lenders are are really willing to work with folks and are trying to be accommodating given the the very dire circumstances that that individuals are experiencing. Uh, so if your mortgage is federally backed um, or not, you know, be sure that you're reaching out to your lender and trying to communicate with them what you're experiencing. And again, if it's federally backed, there's going to be that very specific foreclosure moratorium um, that would be in place for you. And if not, um, your lender is hopefully able and willing to work with you um, to try to come up with some type of plan to avoid foreclosure and avoid some of those um, negative ramifications of, of the loss of property that occurred with the fires. So can you elaborate more on what is a federally backed mortgage? We know like a VA or USDA loans that's that are, but what about FHA? Uh, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, are those all applicable? Yes, those are all applicable. And there's actually, um, your lender should be able to tell you um, whether your loan is federally backed or not. So that's usually the best place to start. Um, if you do still have your, your paperwork from your mortgage, that's also a place to look to see if it's federally backed. Um, there is a tool as well, um, and I, I don't have it uh, linked in front of me here, but um, where you can actually look if your mortgage is in fact federally backed. Um, mm -hmm. Also, um, it's not always 100% accurate. So again, I would encourage folks to reach out to their lender directly. Uh, mm -hmm. But it applies to more to more people than you think. Um, more more mortgages are federally backed, I think, than people realize, um, based on the variety of programs and and things that you had mentioned. Now, so I would encourage folks to again contact their lender directly and and see if if their um, if their loan would be covered by that. So for certain homeowners, their mortgage are not federally backed. Uh, what kind of income threshold they have to meet in order to get your office assistant to try to, you know, get legal assistance and negotiating with lenders? Yeah, so the Legal Aid Society of Hawaii, um, obviously, were meant to primarily serve folks um, of lower income, right? So for most of our funding sources, there are um, income requirements, income and asset requirements. So um Generally speaking, folks would need to be below 125% of the federal poverty level, mm -hmm. although we have several grants um, that allow us to assist other individuals um, that may not meet that threshold. For example, anyone uh, over the age of 60, we can assist uh, because we have funding to, to serve the kapuna in our community, right? So that's, that's one example. Uh, we also have some uh, grants specific to the disaster that are a little bit more broad in their, in their parameters in terms of who we're able to assist and not having those same kind of restrictive uh, asset or income uh, requirement. So if folks uh, are curious and wanna see if they qualify for assistance, I would certainly say to call our intake staff um, and complete an application. They, they're the ones that would know whether or not you qualify, right? And meet those grant requirements. And if you do uh, qualify, then you can be routed to our office um, for further assistance. And if not, at a minimum, um, our intake staff could refer you to other resources or maybe other, um, you know, legal service entities in our community that could assist. I see. We just covered the one biggest, uh, you know, cost item on a homeowner. I mean, the other one probably is homeowners association dues or condominium association dues. When we, you know, volunteered with a legal hotline, all the attorneys reported back that that's one of the most asked, frequently asked question is, what do I do when I building, my building got burned down, but I have still all these monthly dues can keep accumulating as a homeowner. What are my options? You know, can you help shed some light on that? Yeah. So I guess I'll take a step back first and just talk a little bit about sort of how, how broad, you know, that is right. So um, obviously there are condo um, buildings that were entirely destroyed. There are some um, areas where there are HOA fees where maybe only, um, you know, one or two of the properties are are destroyed and, and the rest of the property might be fine, for example. Um, so it, it, the situation does, does vary from person to person and from situation to situation. Um, the first place I would encourage folks to look in terms of what their obligations are um, would be the bylaws of their community, right? So each association operates differently. 
Um, and in terms of what type of insurance uh, and other things your HOA fees would cover um, and what that would mean in terms of the you know, disaster related impacts of the fire um, would vary from, from association to association. Um, you know, unfortunately, what happened um, on Maui is not unique, right? There's a, a lot of disasters that have happened um, across the country and across the world. Um, so we are uh, working currently with some of our national partners at the um, National Housing Law Project, as well as the National Consumer Law Center, to try to put our heads together on addressing that very problem that you described. Mm -hmm. um, because certainly there are folks that, you know, have lost everything, right? And yet the... Um, the HOA fees are going to continue to accumulate and it's going to cause additional problems for that individual. So um, we're hoping to have additional resources that we can push um, out on that shortly. So I would definitely, uh, you know, again, if, if folks are experiencing that specific issue, um, encourage them to reach out uh, to Legal Aid and to check out our website uh, as we make those materials available, um, you know, as we kind of as a community work on getting our, our hands around that, that problem. If it's uh, not confidential, can you share a little bit more information? You're talking about this relief. Are there going to be specific, let's say, relief funds available to help people cover this period? Or it's more like a moratorium kind of legislation you guys are trying to push for? What kind of uh, you know direction we're heading on that issue? Right. So it's it's not really on the legislative front, at least not to my knowledge. Um, what we're trying to learn from some of our national partners is what the experience on the state and local level has been. Um, you know, in some of these other places that have experienced disaster, right? So mm -hmm. uh, think New Orleans post-Katrina or, you know, after the, the Paradise fires, um, things like that, right? Um, so I think trying to understand that is going to give, you know, us at Legal Aid and in the community more broadly, a better understanding of programmatically what that might look like, right? Like what the state or right. local government um, or other entities, nonprofits, and other folks may need to do to meet that need, right? Because we know that that need is out there. We know that folks are going to um, be saddled with, you know, large HOA bills that they're not going to be able to pay, and it's going to fall in this gap of what's not going to be covered by insurance or maybe other assistance that they would be getting through, you know, FEMA or or other, you know, entities. So um, that's something that we're we're hoping to really better understand um, how it manifests and kind of what the scale of that is. Mm -hmm. in order to try to figure out what the actual mechanisms of addressing that that issue are. Okay, we covered homeowners. What about tenants? You know, there's also investors, you know, who are landlords, you know, in terms of that, what information can you share? Yeah, so um, in the wake of the disaster, um, the governor put out an emergency proclamation. In fact, a series of emergency proclamations that, among other things, addressed some of the landlord-tenant issues that would arise post-disaster, right? Um, among them, I, I guess, first and foremost, is a prohibition on rental increases um, on Maui. And that's island wide, regardless of whether it's in the area that was areas that were impacted by the fire or not. Right. So right now, at least through November 6th, and obviously subject to further pro uh, further you know, proclamation or extension from the governor, um, any type of rental increases would be strictly prohibited. Uh, another thing that's prohibited right now is pursuing um, summary possession or eviction cases due to non-payment, right? So mm -hmm. right now, um, and again, this is island-wide on Maui, so regardless of whether or not it's in any of the fire-impacted communities or not, um, a landlord cannot terminate a tenancy for non-payment. Um, and that's true in terms of um, something as small as issuing a notice all the way through the actual court action. I see. Um, and and. The district court on Maui has actually taken the position of um, just dismissing new filings that allege non-payment, right? So understanding the governor's order and the goal of, of not further displacing individuals um, given the, the mass displacement that's already occurred because of the fire. Does um, this uh, only apply to residential leases? Uh, yes, it only applies to residential leases. That's correct. What about those, uh, let's say, leasehold, uh, you know, there's lease rent instead of like a, the rental agreement we're dealing with, uh, you know, like, a, for example, Oahu, there are a lot of properties, they are still leasehold. So there's going to be, you know, the lease rent, right? And then uh, that's different because that's long term. Uh, so in that kind of situation, would that also, you know, if there's a default on the on the lease rent, would this also bar that or no? That's a good question. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I believe the way that the um, the proclamation reads is that I, I don't believe that it would contemplate um, rent for for leasehold properties. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that, frankly. So uh, why don't we go, 
you know, go down the list of the other frequently asked questions your office is constantly dealing with? Yeah, so I guess I'll talk about another thing, and that's um, just terminations of month-to-month -month tenancies, right, with 45-day notice. Um, as I'm sure most of the audience knows, uh, in the state of Hawaii, a month-to-month -month lease can be terminated with 45 days notice um, for any reason or no reason at all, right? Um, part of the emergency proclamation also addresses that um, and invokes a, a particular piece of the um, disaster um uh, statutes that basically says that the only way that a landlord can terminate a month to month lease during the period of proclamation. So again, this is through November 6th, um, consistent with what I was mentioning earlier about rent increases and evictions for non-payment um, would prohibit terminations of month to month tenancies unless the owner or immediate family member intends to occupy the property uh, or if the home has been sold to a bona fide purchaser. So there's additional restrictions that are in place right now, again, presumably with the intent of keeping folks housed and, and causing greater disruption in the housing market. So are there any uh, right now available resources besides of FEMA, besides of, you know, as everybody's going through that insurance claim processing process, any other, you know, government provided uh, resources or really fund? And so all these donations, Maui Strong Fund, are there anything like that uh, people can access? And what would be the criteria for be eligible for that kind of relief? Yeah, so there's a lot of, and I think this is part of um, what makes um, kind of post-disaster landscape so difficult, right? Because there's mm -hmm so much information and, and so many, you know, really well, well-intentioned folks and groups and um, government entities that are trying to, to fill these voids and make sure that resources are available for folks. Um, you know, obviously FEMA is one that, that people are aware of and, and know, and certainly they have a, a large presence on, on the ground um, at the disaster uh, recovery centers that I was mentioning earlier, as well as throughout, um, you know, different places on Maui currently. Uh, the Small Business Administration also offers uh, very low interest loans um, to folks that may need to rebuild their, their business or rebuild their home. Uh, and they also have a, a very big presence on Maui currently um, to try to get people the money, the resources they need to get back on their feet. Uh, I'd also plug um, United Policyholders. So that's a nonprofit organization that uh, can assist folks in navigating kind of the chaotic insurance situation that that happens for many people post-disaster. And they also have a, a presence at the um, disaster, recovery, disaster Recovery Center. Um, and, and to that end, I guess I'll make a plug for that. So, um, you know, as of right now, the Disaster Recovery Centers um, are slated to remain open through the end of November. Mm -hmm. um, so I would encourage anyone in the community that's trying to understand what their resources are, um, what programs are available, that that's a great place to start um, because there are a ton of folks that are there at tables from all these different organizations I mentioned and many, many more, you know, other nonprofits, um, folks that have, you know, grants and, and different things that they can give out to, to individuals that need assistance, um, kind of all congregated in one place, right? So it's, it's not a full-on one-stop shop, but it's a great place to go to, you know, Kind of work the room, talk to different individuals, and see what's out there. So I would encourage individuals that haven't had the opportunity to make it out there, or maybe haven't been there um, in a while. Right, as the need changes, the um, the presence on the ground has changed, and there's maybe some different organizations or different um, individuals in the community that are present there now that could maybe assist with different issues that weren't there before. I would encourage individuals that are um, you know seeking those resources to take advantage of of those spots. Um, I'd also plug the the CNHA hub in Kahului at Maui Mall that I mentioned earlier. Um, they also have a great number of resources um, and individuals there that are able and willing to assist. So so folks should definitely take advantage of of those places in the community. Can people just walk in or they need to make appointment in advance? Yeah, they're all walk-in. Um, so at the Disaster Recovery Center in Lahaina and Kahului, uh, they're open from 8 uh, a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, from Monday through Saturday. And it's walk-in. Um, you know, it may be that whatever table you want to go to, there's a few other people in line, so you may have to wait a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, it's walk in and, um, you know, go around to the tables that you that you want to, um, you know, speak to and, and make time to speak with them. Um, 
And then uh, same thing with the CNHA site that I keep mentioning, they'll actually do intakes um, there in person as well. So they'll be able to kind of triage individuals to where they need to go, right? So when you come in, they'll ask you some questions about what you're looking for, who you're hoping to connect with, and then they can kind of do that that warm handoff, so to speak, to to someone that's there that might be able to assist in that particular area that you're you're hoping to get information on. And of course, uh, your organization also has a good website and there's like uh, tons of information materials there people can access, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'd encourage folks to to visit our website, um, legalaidhawaii.org, uh, full of good information um, and, and constantly updated. So as, again, the needs of the community evolve, as things change, like I mentioned with the foreclosure moratorium being extended today, um, or other resources or, or things being, um, you know, made available, we try to keep that, um, you know, updated so, so that individuals can access that. Great. So uh, thank you so much for your time. And is there any upcoming event or organization wants to promote here? Or I heard that your office is also hiring, right? So you want to share that information to the community with this venue? Yeah, that's great. So I'll put in a plug for that because, you know, the, the Maui the Maui staff is incredible and has done a great job to meet the needs of the community in this very difficult time while also, um, you know, handling their regular workload, right? Um, but with that in mind, we have uh, a managing attorney position that's open on Maui. We have a staff attorney position that's open on Maui. Um, and we also have a disaster legal services attorney position uh, that ideally would be based on Maui, but there's some flexibility to that um, with the understanding, obviously, that there would be some travel back and forth to Maui in that role. Um, but they're all positions that would be great to fill to better support our community and meet the needs that we know are there and know will be there as this um, you know, recovery continues. So certainly would encourage folks to, to um, apply or, or pass that along if they know um, folks that might be interested. In terms of events, I will say um, tomorrow there's going to be a Tongan Resource Fair at the um, Cameron Center in Wailuku. That'll be from three to eight, um, if anyone is able to check that out. And then just continuing to plug, um, you know, the events that we we know, um, the presence that we know is always um, available at the Disaster Recovery Centers and um, the CNHA Hub. Um, and certainly uh, be on the lookout for, for forthcoming events because we'll be um, continuing to try to be present in the community to, um, you know, meet the needs as they evolve. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you're joining us today, sharing all these great information resources. Thank you also for all the efforts you put in helping our community. As I understand, you've been commuting, commuting between Oahu and Maui. That must be difficult for your work schedule, right? Yeah, we've been very busy, but I'm I'm happy to be able to to help. And and I you know started my legal career on Maui, like you mentioned in the intro. So I I always have a soft spot for the community and the people there. So happy to go back and forth and and try to help meet the needs of the community and and thankful and grateful for everyone, um, both in our organization and and throughout the the Maui and greater Hawaii community that stepped up during the the real difficult um, challenges that we've we've had as a community the last few months. Okay, thank you, Nick. I think our time is up. We'll wrap up today's program. Thank you again. And thank you so much for all your colleagues who worked hard, you know, to help people in Lahaina. Thank you. Mm -hmm.